All right. Welcome. Welcome to Creative Arts Apothecary. I'm your host, Marina Tellner, and I am so happy to introduce my guest, Shelly Clammer. Hi, Shelly. Hello, Marina. <laughs> Glad to be here. Uh, so happy to talk to you. Shelly is a depth-oriented psychotherapist and an educator with the International Expressive Arts Therapy Association. She supports women who struggle with anxiety and depression to heal emotional repressions with powerful practices of self-expression. So good. This is this is so good. Um, I'm a huge fan of your work. I, guess I keep saying that. It's just so true. But be before I ask you about your background, he can I ask you about your, your, your physical background, your actual, that yeah. beautiful art behind you? For sure. This, this was my summer project. I had, to, I decided that I was going to paint it. So I just added layer upon layer from layer upon layer on the weekends. And so it started out really bright and kind of purple and blue. And then gradually I just added more things. So yes, this was my fun summer project. So I sort of saw it as a one great big giant abstract painting because that's been my current fascination is exploring abstract painting and so I thought I'm going to devote my summer to abstract painting so I did lots of little ones which you can see behind me and um and um, this great big wall as well <laughs> so cool I mean it's beautiful and just the possibility that you know you can paint a solid color or you can really you know yes. treat your wall like a like a painting and ah, I love it I love it so <laughs> For, for those of us who are new to your work, can you tell us a little bit, please, about about your your personal background? <laughs> I'm sure, well, but the, the the journey, the journey <laughs> that um, through which you discovered the powerful connection between art and healing. Yes, absolutely. Well. I, I see myself as specializing in spontaneous creativity and in, in teaching spontaneous creativity, and I have been doing it solid for 15 years now, for sure. And um, prior to that, I was doing my own personal work in my journals in my 30s. But in my 20s, I was, I was a, actually a high-end gallery artist. And I was doing very aesthetically designed paintings. And uh, the way I say it to people is I was painting from my social mask. I wanted to appear good. I wanted to appear talented. I wanted to impress people with my work. And uh, so I was very painstaking about creating these paintings. And um, of course, when you're trying to be perfect all the time, you obviously, all of us, whenever we're striving for perfection, we start to repress anything that isn't that, right? So I had a lifetime of depression <laughs> and repression. Uh, repression, I think, causes uh, causes depression. And, and so um, when I got pregnant with my daughter, when I was about 30, I couldn't keep my emotions down anymore. And I had to start painting and drawing and collaging in a different way. And so I decided to pull my work out of the gallery and do a very deep exploration of my emotions through spontaneous art. And so I did that all through my 30s. And then when I was in my 40s, I actually got hired in several different art therapy programs and I just really learned how to work with people in this way and um, in the last five years um, well 10 because there was an overlap but uh, I have been a psychotherapist a depth psychotherapist working with people through spontaneous art and writing in my practice fantastic and it's, it's so meaningful that this is a personal experience that you know you 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 try on yourself and, and then and, and you share with others and um yes yeah I'm so big on the lived experience of it of it of it all like I feel like you know to facilitate well we have to live through the process right so that's definitely my my perspective and so living deeply into the expressive arts practice practices uh are just so important to me I just I always have a practice on the go <laughs> yeah. yeah and um, how about can you can you tell us um, in a nutshell a little bit more about uh, depth therapy? Like, but what is that? Yeah, well, depth therapy it goes uh, the way I see it is it goes below the conscious mind, and um, so the most popular form of therapy in the world right now is called cognitive behavioral therapy, and so that really is about changing just the surface thoughts and behaviors that are troublesome. And of course, that doesn't get down to the cause at all. So the way I see depth therapy is it's about going 
deep down below the mask, which is what I was painting and drawing from when I was in my 20s, and just seeing what what is down there. And a great way to access that uh, is through dreams and spontaneous creativity. And I like spontaneous collage the best. Like I think that is the easiest way to tap into the subconscious and un unconscious layers of the mind. And and you you generously agreed to guide us through an activity. Yeah, so this is something that I have been teaching for 15 years, and I'm going to show you a few examples, and we're going to do one together just so people can see what the process is. Super easy, but it'll be kind of fun to share at the end. So I'm just going to switch my camera here, and can you see that? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And the words are the right way? <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so I just have a few collages here. This is an example. And so these are just uh, some images taken from a magazine, typically for an eight and a half by 11 collage. You just need maybe three to five images. And I've been using a lot of words lately. And so I do encourage people if they want to try this process, just to add a few words, just because it integrates the right brain with the left brain, and it makes it easier to kind of understand the collage. The logical mind actually doesn't really like spontaneous uh, practices because it uh, makes it feel out of control. And the left mind is all about control and protection and fear. And so I always like to throw in a few words for the, for the left hemisphere of the brain so that it feels happier. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so I'm going to bring in a few magazines. And so I did bring a couple in. So I have some design magazines. I love interior design. That's my background. That's where I came from in my 20s and hence the perfectionism uh, of design. But I also want to mention that National Geographic magazines are really, really good for shadow work. So, you know, there's mm. there's darker imagery in uh, National Geographic. So if you're doing deep dive shadow work, I would recommend getting a stack of National Geographic magazines and working with those images because oftentimes these really glossy, perfect, you know, Martha Stewart living and interior design, uh, there's not a lot of shadow imagery in there. And so if that's what you need to process, you would be typically probably drawn to want to work with the National Geographic. But that said, um, did you want to create one with, with me too, Marina? Yes, I'd, I'd love to. I was, I was really, I am really excited to. I, I collected <laughs> some, some magazines that were nearby and I, I can't wait. I, I love the prompts and there's that suggestion to include the words that for me, I think it helps to have a word nearby because the other side's so active. It really makes sense how you, how yes. you said that. Yeah, some mm -hmm. people are, um, some artists are right brain dominant, and some people are left dominant. We're actually a culture to be, to be left. Uh, that's what we're trained to, to be in our, in our culture. But let's just pick about, like, say, five images, and cut them out. And again, if you see any words that stand out, what we're going for is words and images that feel emotionally strong and so you'll kind of I, I typically sort of feel a kind of a little hit in my gut when I see something that I want and I just opened this magazine and I saw this this girl and so I'm going to cut her out but you want to go for what feels strong <clears throat> yeah sorry excuse me <clears throat> I'm really attracted to so many of these images how do you does that quiet down? Like once it's a, when, when you do this regularly, do you do this regularly? Can you I do. I do. I've just started a new, uh, I'm teaching a collage for self discovery uh, course based on mm. my book that I just released on Kindle. And so I just launched a live course. And so part of the live course is doing a 90 day practice. So I'm doing 90, 90 collages in 90 days. And Ooh. so, um, yes. And, so what I say is typically if you see a lot of images that you like, just, just cut out maximum 10 because you're going to choose mm. only enough what you, you know, you can't fit them all on the page. And what will happen in a practice or a series is they will go into the next collage, right? So, so that's okay. Just make sure that you don't pick too, too, too many. Because if you start to get a stack of 20 or more, you're going to start to feel overwhelmed. 
I used to, I've been teaching this process for, for 15 years. And I, that was one of my, my first big mistakes was just letting people have unlimited time to choose unlimited images. And it was quite funny because nobody even got to their collage in the workshop. So mm -hmm. I had to set limits because I think also the emotional brain is hungry for imagery. And so when we start to work with pictures, it, it sees a, maybe a lot of different things it might want to process. So, so you just need to kind of narrow it down a little bit so you get one piece to work with today. Well, that really lands with me because I'm, I'm like this one and this one and this one. So just honing it down to, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, I, I'm happy to hear you say that. I'll have to pick a few <laughs> and it, it was yeah. really helpful for me to hear you say also like to suggest the the variety of magazines because sometimes so I, I don't usually have that many magazines well now I've been collecting with like a, a visual journal artist I collect magazines but for a while I just had some fashion magazines around and it's easy to not feel so great <laughs> when I'm looking through those so, exactly <clears throat> exactly suggestion, the variety is so good so good yes indeed and um sometimes uh you know those those really glossy fashion magazines I find I find the Martha Stewart living magazines are like that too where everything is so perfect and those those kinds of magazines are are good to collage from in the sense that you start to sometimes the social mask will want to create a collage and and so it's you know, the social mask is typically based on perfection and looking good. And so sometimes the mask will, will be drawn to those kinds of images that reflect who you think you should be. <clears throat> and that's okay too, because the spontaneous collage process, we're going to be collaging always, if this is a, a series or a practice that people choose to take, to, to do, uh, you know, one day you'll collage something dark. One day you'll collage something light. Mm. It just depends what the psyche wants to wants to express on it any given day. And a, another really fun tip that you shared was um, to look at design magazines because they, they kind of help launch. They're already in that juicy creative space, and um, yes. I hadn't thought of that at all. That was yes. that's exciting. Yes, oh. indeed. Yeah. Yeah, the design magazines are just where I'm at right now. And it's funny because all these design magazines, they're very expensive. And I, I ended up rescuing them out of a dumpster a couple of summers ago. And they've just been sitting in my shelf and I have not been called to collage with them. But now I'm in kind of a, a visionary place uh, in my life and having done a ton of shadow work in my life as well. Mm. But these are really amazing. Uh, the words and the images are really great for, for visioning, visioning bigger. And so I'm really quite enjoying them, but they've been sitting there for, for, for a couple of years. So it's kind of mm. important to, to go towards the magazines that you're just drawn to without really questioning why that would be. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. So how many images and do you have any words yet, Marina? Have you, have you found? <laughs> you tell. <laughs> Tons of images, I bet. Yeah. I <laughs> forced myself to put the magazine away and starting with the base, but I think I got it down to like five pages with a few words. I think I'm, I'm ready to. You ready to oh, go? Oh, I started gluing. Uh oh. No, you go <laughs> for it. I think I have uh, enough. And you're getting ahead of me. That's awesome. That's that's mm -hmm. the way we want it want it to go. <laughs> I um I am actually doing my uh, collages in a journal because, like I said, I'm doing a 90 day practice. So I'm I'm do, working in a series, and it's going to be just easier to to see the progression. So I'm doing a collage a day. So this is my collage <clears throat> for today. So this is great. <laughs> oh, fantastic! I'm really I'm ta I'm taking it all in as you're saying it. And it's, it's it's so empowering. It's so inspiring. Just the 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 series. I love working in a series. And what what what's something that 
that stands out to you that you see in a series? Yes, that's right. I, I, I think series are really, really powerful for displaying um, like a, like themes, what, what is happening mm. on a sort of a, a bigger level. And definitely, as I said, um, I did a, I did a 90 day round a couple of years ago and it was, it was super, I did super large collages and I wanted to do them really big and I photographed them and I called them tabletop collages and they were giant and I didn't glue them down. I just created them on my table and they all were very cohesive, all 90 of them. They were very detailed. It, it was all very, very interesting to see. Um, but this one is, this series I can see, I mean, I'm only a few days in, but it's already mm. starting to shape up as um, just basically the theme that's coming through is for me is just go, go bigger, um, take risks, um, you know, connect with people, collaborate. I think when we're doing really deep inner emotional work, it can be kind of a, kind of a quiet time, not necessarily connecting out as much. And so I'm just coming out of a period of that. So now it's more about connecting and teaching and reaching out. And that's what I'm, what I'm seeing is a lot of the imagery that I'm drawn to is very, very bold. And like I said, two years ago, when I gathered these magazines, I couldn't find an image in the magazine that I wanted to use in my collages at all. Mm. And now I just am just diving into them and thinking, oh gosh, I wish I had even more. <laughs> mm. So 90 collages is going to be a big, it's going to be a great big, uh, use of all pictures for sure. You start to develop this fluency, I guess, in, in any stage of, of, at least in my experience. So like you're saying, you can kind of see something that you would want like, to go here or it kind of yes. build, build on itself. And um, yeah, oh, that yeah beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, fluency. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. That's exactly what happens in the practice or a series is like you get very fluent. And um, it's just very fascinating to see them all in a row. Um, mm. I love I love series. I just it's a, it's just a, such a deep way to to dive into something. And sometimes, you know, I, I do try. I mean, collage is my all time favorite for sure. But I'll go into a painting series practice or a drawing series practice and just sometimes even just to explore a material, you know, just like, oh, I just want to work with markers or I just want to work with watercolors for a whole sketchbook. And, and again, it's going for that, that fluency. Mm. And the cross training for the different kinds of Yes, it's like CrossFit. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's true. Some some artists really do like to stick to a to a particular, uh, you know, uh, modality or a, a particular material they prefer to work with. But I really do like to explore. Like I, in the past, I've done like a year worth of mandalas, and I just find d deep diving into these processes to be so fun. Mm doing a bit of tearing here just for fun. Oh, nice, yeah. So Definitely. what I typically do is I, I'll kind of lay out my collage just to, just to, just to play around with where I kind of want things to be loosely. And this is just a, I, d I don't think an intuitive collage or a spontaneous collage has to be perfect. I'm doing a lot of tearing because I want some some mm. rougher edges and so I have mine laid out are you gluing now Marina um yes I'm doing a combination okay. combination gluing and, and cutting excellent I'm gonna do some gluing now I, I, I love that this is quick I mean I, I it, since it's been a while I bet I've done collage I I feel like I could I could do this for a really really long time <laughs> when when I'm more in the practice of it and yes. I love to be in the practice of it then it kind of it picks up momentum and it it is it, we don't always have you know five hours of studio time every day <laughs> so this is a beautiful way to, to get it in get yes. get it out out of you and get the yes. heart into your day 
Yes, get it out and get it in. And, you know, I developed so many of the expressive art and writing practices that I teach when I was working full time in an art therapy program in healthcare. I, mm. I spent 10 years there and I was helping people all day long. And I noticed that I really needed to do my own work, but I didn't have time to say, do an intuitive painting or anything like that. So I had to find these really super quick ways to process. And I used to create these collages in the art studio that I worked in, uh, the art therapy studio on my lunch hours. And so they were so fast, I was able just to eat my salad mm. and create uh, <laughs> usually about three or four collages on my lunch hour, which was great because we were in an art studio and there was oftentimes sort of little rubbings and um, little scraps left over from what we had facilitated. And so I would often incorporate some pieces from the studio. And so, yes, it was very quick and it was a way for me to do my, my inner work, which I needed to do. Brilliant. You were so super busy and yet you, you found it energizing to, 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 keep, to create in your free time. I was, uh, you know, right. the, the neat thing about working in an art studio was I was already in mode and I was kind of hungry to create because I was so mm. facilitating all day. Mm. Um, however, um, I'll just show you, I have a little collage here. Um, so sometimes if you can't create in a day, just do some, mm. just one image and, and, uh, and some words. That's, so that's, good. that's a collage, right? And so this is what I tell my collage groups is that if you have no time, just one image and um, some words, and that's a collage. So, I mean, anybody can do that, right? And then that way you've just done a little bit of emotional processing, right? Yes, yeah, brilliant. Oh, just getting in touch with how you feel. Yes. And, and in, a, in, a, in a safe way, in, a, in an inspiring way. Yes, yes. And in a way that doesn't involve, um, you know, having to, to draw and paint, which is, it's a big mm. deal, right? <clears throat> and Excuse me. Mm -hmm. it does take a good bit of effort to set out painting materials. And I mean, I try to make that simple too. However, it is a, it is a really big deal. So, so I, 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 one thing that I have found as a spontaneous creativity teacher is that anybody can do collage. Whereas when I was teaching intuitive painting, mm. gosh, a long, long time ago, 20 years ago, um, I, I really did find that maybe one or two out of 20 people were very comfortable with the process. Whereas I find with collage, pretty much everybody's comfortable with the process. Wonderful. That's, that's really good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good for facilitators. And I know you're a facilitator and um, I know you offer sort of painting, drawing of your amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, it, but sometimes it's easy just even as a warm up to just do a little, you know, check in collage, that kind of thing. It's kind of nice just to, to start playing with color. So yes. how are you? Are you do, are you done, Marina? I am. I'm, I'm winding down. I was really inspired by that. Um, so the, your, your snippet of um, the way you pared it down oh, yes. in that example that you showed. So I was, yes. I was feeling a little nervous that I can't find the right words, which is actually just like a trigger <laughs> of mine. It's, 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 it's not just so fun when it happens in the art studio because then you can be like, oh, so maybe when it happens outside, it's also just a trigger. Maybe, maybe it's not, not that there aren't exactly. enough words anyway. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right? And, and so it's funny because when you're looking for found words, um, they kind of come from outside of your own mind, but yet your mind has to connect to them. So if you're finding that you're not connecting to anything, I always leave mm. this side of my journal blank. And then I do a lot of writing on that side. So there's like a sort of a reflection process that goes on this side. And so if you don't feel like you have words today, that's totally fine because we're just going to talk about, you know, what it is like I've I've picked um, some obvious words to me and um, some mysterious words to me which I'm going to reflect upon so you can mm. pick words that are kind of strange to you but you're attracted to them nonetheless because you don't have to figure it all out today uh, you'll you'll want to live into this and you'll want to be looking at this collage until you understand it more deeply and because this is coming from the uh, deeper 
you know, the deeper mind, the unconscious coming up to the subconscious, coming up to the conscious, right? So this is yeah. what I would call the subconscious coming into the conscious. Um, mm -hmm. There's going to be some level of mystery. There's going to be some level of not really knowing what everything is. So that's because when the subconscious mind comes into the conscious mind, uh, there's not there's not a lot of words yet. That's why I like to help the mind out in a sense and <laughs> give mm -hmm. it a few words. But if they're not coming, um, I've chosen a sentence, a little phrase here, the domino effect. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder what that what that means. I don't know. Of course, connect and create makes a lot of sense to me because that's what I'm doing now. But um, very curious about that so <laughs> are you ready to yeah. share Marina share your um I, I am yes yeah okay I am. I'm exactly. gonna switch back so we can chat here all right so, so good so yeah. good yeah let's well, see seeing it as a series and in a book and and yes. and, and even as just one simple like oh. you could totally fit this in between what's going on and it's, yes. it's, it's unpacking, which is, I mean, that's part of the theme was unpacking. It's just, <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so grounding. And, and I, I really appreciate this about your work is that, you know, we, we, we go to places that, 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 that are shadowy, that are, that are, that are challenging. And yes. I always come out like through these steps, feeling lighter, feeling grounded, feeling like, yes, yes. I just, I love, can I just say, just knowing you a little bit personally now, since we've been connecting for the last month or two, wow, a way of life, passion and determination. Like you have shown so much passion and determination putting this summit together, right? This interview series, because I know what's been the challenges behind the scenes and I'm feeling kind of teary as I look at it because I'm like, wow, that's so accurate. And um, uh, just the determination that you just, you just keep, you, you just keep going and going and going. And I just greatly admire that about you. So, so making that your way of life. Oh, that moves me a lot because that, that really, that feels very true about you and interesting too, something about the suitcase and um, hmm, the mystery. What is to be unpacked, Marina? <laughs> I can't wait. It'll, it, it'll like trickle up. It'll yes. percolate. It'll do all those crystallize yes. I don't know but I can't wait to see what it does so yes. yeah and I'll, I'll write about it I'll write about it yeah, I really like that practice too because I do it like the analyzer in me is like no no what about me <laughs> like, yeah, yes. Me the work. <laughs> yes honoring that part of your brain as well mm. and, and and writing things down and making associations and and really meditating into that that suitcase perhaps might be good you know just to see like even asking in the writing you know what is in that suitcase and seeing if your even your nighttime dreams offers images of suitcases and what needs to be unpacked and one what needs to come out but um mm. that was very moving to witness that and I'm so glad that I've gotten to know you a bit better and understand where that's <laughs> is that coming from Shelly thank you so much and I, I love how you talk about you know the language of dreams is that this is a way of kind of like a daytime dreaming and it's it, it disconnects it really integrates yes yes everything so yes. ah um, you have you have a, a, a gift for the audience, a free gift. Can you tell us about that, please? I do. And so this is a brand new thing I've created. It's called it's the Intuitive Creativity Challenge. So it just gives a little taster on how to create a very simple collage is basically that sort of word and image, a uh, very simple painting, intuitive painting, and how to do a visionary writing process. So So it's just three instructional videos and um, yes everyone's welcome to come join and and uh, yes that's 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 my way of sort of I love to make the expressive arts very simple you know very easy mm. to understand and that's that's just my way that I created that challenge to to say you know anybody can do this it's easy <laughs> we all have mm -hmm. this way this need to express our deeper selves and and these are three ways in that I offer Beautiful, beautiful, and 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 your work is. is we'll link to your website, and um, I, and your videos on YouTube are fantastic. And it's so interesting because a lot of us we know these techniques, but it's not just about knowing them. Sometimes it's about hearing them in the right way, and yeah. it's about 
connecting with other people. So it's just the, but, but the, the way that you put it out makes it, you know, it, it makes it easier to create that way. So thank you. And, oh. um, I highly, highly recommend your work to everyone and um, to our audience. Remember to keep it creative and have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>